Italy, 1796. Two Austrian armies marched to relieve Bonaparte's siege of Mantua, threatening to encircle and destroy the outnumbered French. In this block game by Amabel Holland, players must chase, trick, and trap the enemy, seeking a decisive battle. So this is Mark Herman's fault. Um, in 2018, we published one of his games, a game for our children called Ribbit. Um, and I think Mark wouldn't be too upset if I mentioned that it didn't necessarily sell the same number of copies as Empire of the Sun. Um, but that's okay. We're able to try things because we have a print-on-demand model, and that means there's no cash flow problems, no inventory, um, unless there are wood bits, uh, because those we pay for ahead of time in large quantities, and we have to store them in my bedroom. And um, Ribbit had these big, chunky red and blue blocks, and because it didn't sell as well as we hoped, those blocks have been in my room for a very long time. They take up a lot of space. The boxes are very heavy. And eventually I just was like, I'm going to design a block game to get these blocks out of my space. And so I did. Something I love about block games is putting stickers on the blocks. It's one of my favorite things. Um, I love doing it. No one else seems to. Everyone else seems to hate putting stickers on blocks. And I have good news for the rest of you because you don't need to sticker these blocks. Um, early on in the process, we reached out to Blue Panther, our printing partner, to see about how to do the sticker sheets for the size of block. And he found that for our model, what would be the most feasible and the most efficient economically would be to print right on the blocks. And after a bit of trial and error and trying different techniques, he found the one that let us print on the blocks in a very attractive fashion. Bonaparte threatens the four Austrian blocks in Padua. Next turn, they'll strike with a pincer move. That's unless Austria strikes first. You can escape, refusing battle, if you roll equal to or under the number of attacking blocks. The game has a bifurcated structure that alternates operational maneuver with set piece battles. You really need to be good at both of these things in order to be successful. At the same time, I don't want them to feel like two separate games. I really want them to integrate and fold into each other. And how I approach this is that the operational maneuver, that can and mouse chase, that's going to determine when and under what circumstances you're fighting these battles. If you have a army that's much bigger than yours coming at you, you don't want to fight that battle. And it's pretty easy to escape because you see this big ponderous column coming at you. If it's four blocks strong, well, you just got to roll one, two, three, or four to get away from them, right? Um, but if you're being converged on for multiple points by smaller groups, you're not necessarily going to see them coming. And you're going to have to make an escape roll against each of those groups. If you fail any one of those, then you have to fight a battle against all of them. And that that dynamic, that push and pull, I think really gives the operational game its flavor and really informs how the battles play out. Unlike many block games, the strength of the block doesn't correspond to a number of dice, but a number of units. Players reveal blocks and alternate deploying units on the battle display. Units are drawn from a pool with randomized morale values. Winning battles improves the morale of the pool, while suffering casualties degrades morale. Once all units are deployed, the attacking player rolls two dice to determine the minimum number of rounds for the battle. Players then alternate turns spending commands to activate their wings. Moving a wing costs a single command, regardless of its size. With three wings to Austria's four, France is in danger of being outflanked on their right. An early turning maneuver hopes to extend her line, but reveals the morale value of its frontmost unit. Austria protects the flank of her deep three-unit wing by advancing her shallow right, but this only leaves two commands and three wings. She chooses to leave the center behind, apply pressure on the French right. France meets this by completing their turning maneuver. 
Then, she attacks on the left. Because two units make up the attacking wing, this costs two commands. She adds the number of units to the roll. This isn't more than the enemy's morale, so they survive the attack. Austria spends three commands to attack with their deep formation. This roll is enough to eliminate the front unit, so the same roll is compared to the back. The entire wing is wiped out. France has similar luck on her right. Austria's next attack is not so lucky. They roll doubles. That's a blunder, and it eliminates the first unit in the wing. In this case, the only unit in the wing. This frees up the French to turn and meet the threat at its flank. Then, the French right threatens the Austrians with a powerful flank attack. Austria can't risk it. They turn to meet it. This means they don't have enough commands to attack. France takes advantage of this. Austria's first line breaks, but the second holds. Austria strikes a counter blow. The French position is precarious. But then France does something risky. They double the stakes. Austria can either concede defeat, suffering a single loss, or accept the new stakes. Two losses for the loser. They accept. It proves to be an error. With the French now in their rear, it will take two full turns for the Austrians to turn and meet them, giving the French the first attack. Rather than risk complete annihilation, Austria concedes defeat, suffering two losses. 